Hello and welcome to that 90s wrestling podcast. I'm your host, James Tunson. Today, joined by a very special guest. She is the first lady of professional wrestling, and she is the first lady of Ring of Honor. There's one and only Maria Canellis Bennett. How are you doing, Maria? I'm wonderful. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, I'm in the van today because I've literally uh, just finished work. As you call it over there, I'm a contractor, so very dusty, so I haven't had the time to uh, spruce myself up and look nice, so you have to take uh, me. Okay, you look lovely, and I could use a contractor right now. We're thinking about remodeling some of my house, so um, cool. unfortunately, I think you might be just a little bit far away for that. Just a bit. Uh, depends what the fee is. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm currently building the house, so it's, uh, yeah, yeah. fortunately the weather's just coming out quite nicely, but we're oh, all good. Good. <laughs> cool. So, Maria, I suppose we'll uh, jump to the beginning. So, the Diva Search Contest, which I suppose most of wrestling fans uh, first knew you. So, how did it come about? Did you see an ad on TV, or how did it go? I did. I saw an advertisement on television. Um, I had met Trish um, while she was working with Stacker 2, and um, I, you know, uh, I had talked to her about it as well. And I was a huge wrestling fan at the time. So I entered in the Diva Search. Awesome. And uh, you made it quite far. You made it to the final five. And I mean, we saw other people also who ended up getting contracts like Michelle McCall, obviously the winner, Christy Emmy. I think Candace, uh, when I spoke to her, she got to like the top 25 or something. Uh, the one lady I do want to speak about, it seemed like, the majority of you had a dislike for it was uh, Carmella. Now, for people who's watching, I'm not talking about current day Carmella. I'm talking about yeah. Carmella who was in the show. So why was it? It seemed like, especially yourself, like you get, basically gave her the birds when you got voted off. I did. I gave her the birds. Um, I, she, she showed up late all the time. And she would show up late. And then she would want to get straight in the makeup chair. So she would be throwing other people out of the makeup chair. Um, she was just very disrespectful to all of us. Um, we were all in the same position, but she acted like she was better than everyone else. How happy was you then when uh, Christy won it, when it came down to her and uh, Christy? Oh, you know what? She, Christy's amazing. She's a firecracker. And, like, I, I thought she was perfect. Um, she was the perfect choice to win. Um, super athletic, beautiful, in great shape. Like, um, had a love for the business so like yeah i i definitely think like she was the right choice yeah i would imagine you were all just very happy that you know she got the win instead of uh, carmella <laughs> yeah yeah cool so off the back of this then you got signed by wwe and they put you down to uh ovw so uh what was it like working in ovw and i mean you worked with plenty of names during that time who went on their careers like ken anderson and such so what was your time in ovw like it was crazy. I, I was on the road pretty much full time with WWE, too. So I would come in. Um, I'd fly in usually either Tuesday or Wednesday. And then I would do the show at OVW on Wednesday night, train on Thursday, back on the road on Friday. So it was crazy. Um, but I got to work under Paul Heyman. Um, I, I got to really see the ins and outs of how a show was put together. And so it was really an educational experience for me. And uh, I know you was there during the end of his time, but I know a lot of people preferred Paul Heyman's run uh, off management compared to Jim Cornette. Uh, what was Cornette like during them days? Cornette hated me. Uh, Why? He, I, I don't know if he did an interview or what, but he talked about how I was dumb and I didn't know who anybody was. Um, at the time, I was a huge fan. I was not, not dumb. I just, uh, I was given a character and I, I tried to play it to the best of my ability. And, um, yeah, he just didn't like me. But then he brought me into Ring of Honor. So, like, whatever, full <laughs> circle. Um, thanks for the job. Like, I, so I have no ill words to speak about uh, that particular time. Um, it just, you know, I, Paul Heyman it was a great mentor. And Jim Cornette, well, he just didn't like me. Well, it's quite clear that you're quite intelligent about wrestling. I mean, let's be honest. So, is it a case that you played your role so well that you actually worked Jim Cornette and he actually believed it? In a lot of time, in a lot of ways, I liked playing my character pretty much full time because at that time there was a lot of sexism. There was a lot of things that were kind of flying around. And if I was the dumb girl, then people kind of left me alone. And yeah. 
for me, it was almost like some shield against <laughs> everyone else and they're crazy. So, um, yeah, a lot of people believed it. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it was a good row and you, during this time, you managed to work with so many stars like John Cena, while you was comment, uh, interviewing him, Ric Flair and that. But you also started doing a few matches, and one of the matches I noticed you'd done, which you you was really into the entrance, was your tag match with Jeff Hardy. So what's it like tagging with Jeff? He's just one of them cat He's one of my favorites of all time. So what's it like tagging with him, feeling that energy? When they told me I was tagging with I was so excited. I, like, yeah. I... I he's one of my favorites of all time. And especially back then, um, I grew up small town, middle of nowhere, um, to see someone like Jeff Hardy. Um, he was like an alien to me. Um, and I, I wanted to be like him and Lita and Matt. And I just, I thought they were fantastic. And, uh, I really was drawn to that. Um, just the whole look of that group, the whole attitude, everything about them. Um, so being able to tag with them was awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, like I mentioned off camera, I spoke to one of your friends, uh, Candice Michelle, and uh, same thing. She had the opportunity to tag with him, and she's like, she says it's just a lifelong dream. When you tag with him, you don't realize how charismatic he is to you're actually with him. So same sort of deal, really. But um, you actually worked a bit of a program with, Candice and Vince's Devils and the late Ashley Mazzara. So what was it like working with uh, th these bunch of ladies? I, I would say that anybody that really wants to know what the divas were like, go back and watch some of that stuff. Mm. Uh, watch the character development. Watch the matches and don't just turn the match off because you think it's short. Um, we accomplished a lot in a very minimal amount of time. And it's impressive. It really is. And Victoria is just one of those unsung heroes in the business. She got each and every one of us through our first matches. And, um, of course, Tori is a bona fide superstar. So yeah. the group of the three of them was just, you look across the ring and you're like, wow. Um, and that went across the board with all the women back then. Like, they they were superstars. We would walk into a place and everybody would stop. Everybody would look. And, you know, you would have Maurice and Michelle McCool and uh, Natalia. And, like, we'd go out to eat. And it was constant. Um, yeah. It was different this last time I went back. I wasn't in the same position as I was the first time around. But um, I couldn't go anywhere in my first uh, run with WWE without being noticed somewhere. Um, this second time around, it was, it, I didn't feel any different than I did when I was on the indies. Yeah. And, um, well, I've got a confession to make. So in 2006, um, you've toured over to the UK. So I've only been to a handful of shows, and I mean literally two, <laughs> and uh, WWE shows. And, you was part of that show in uh, Nottingham back in November 2006, I believe. And, ah. uh, and there's that card. And I've actually interviewed quite a few people off that card. Yourself, Candice Michelle, JTG, and uh, Trevor Murdoch. So I'm trying to work my way through the list. So did you have any uh, fun experiences traveling the UK and any fun stories? And Nottingham is amazing. Um, there's that road. Uh, is it King's? Kings, I don't know, but I used to go shopping there because our hotel was right around the corner from like this great shopping area. And um, I always look forward to that. And then is that where, um, oh, what's the restaurant in the hotel? Um, f funny name. I'm trying but to I, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the hotel. Uh, anyways, there is a restaurant that um, I may or may not have had a little too much fun in um drinking <laughs> and uh yeah i i remember dancing on a table i think happened at that i mean maybe maybe that's not true but i'm pretty sure that might have happened oh so uh, i think i was like 17 back in them days so yeah i was, still, I, was still a, I was a baby so i wish i could go back to those days <laughs>
<laughs> cool. And uh, so one of your uh, biggest storylines was the uh, Santino Morella revolving the uh, Playboy deal. And it, it, I mean, Santino is one of the comedy greats. Uh, I think he's one of the unsung heroes as well. And what was it like working with Santino every day and being in this uh, storyline? I had to like live outside my body when I would work with him because I would I would bust. I would laugh. Um, so, uh, there's one in particular, he was doing, I think he was doing push-ups, and every time he got to four, he would say the four and I couldn't get through it. I just could not get through him doing that. And, um, yeah, working with him was incredible. That storyline was great. It was ahead of its time. Um, it was me standing up for what I wanted to do with my own body against another man. And, um, it was really, uh, you know, it was a controversial thing at that time because not a lot of people were doing it. I got to have all the girls come out with me to beat on Santino, like, and Santino was such a good sport. He like, he's such yep. a, um, amazing human being. So, um, yeah, it was really cool. Cool. And uh, I suppose one of the coolest moments, I suppose you could say this is one of your WrestleMania moments, was tagging with the late Ashley Mazzaro at WrestleMania 24. So how did it feel tagging with Ashley? And I would imagine, like everyone, we was all sad when we heard it about her passing. So how much did she mean to you during your time in WWE? So working with Ashley, um, she, was, uh, she was another one, bona fide superstar. Like that, the crowd, when she would come out, like, you never heard anything like it. They loved her. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, you're cool. It was, they loved her. They attached to her. She had such a sweet soul that um, she hugged everybody. Like, fans and friends, everyone she hugged. Um, and it still doesn't seem real that she's gone. Um, she had such a big presence that... The fact that she's gone is just uh, unbelievable. Um, and I, I, still, um, I still think about that. I, you know, I'll go to a signing and think, like, where is she? You know, uh, especially now that the indies are starting to happen again. And just being at WrestleMania weekend where there were signings and looking around going, where's Ashley? Because um, she should still be here. Yeah, she was one of my, I mean, I've got so many fun memories of the Ruthless Aggression era and the Divas during that time. And Ashley was one of my favorites because uh, she had like a unique look as well. And, you know, she was the punk rock chick and growing up, I'm into punk rock music. So to me, she's like the perfect woman. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, it's so sad when we heard about the news. So, so sad. Um, but like when I've sp spoke to yourself now, for example, and Candace, like everyone I've spoke to always seems to have great memories of her during that time so it's always nice here but such a loss um but the, after mania and a few months after that you moved to smackdown and i mean smackdown's changed now these days i suppose you could say smackdown's da show but back then i think you've said in previous interviews you felt like it was like the burial ground for a lot of wrestlers uh was that how you felt yeah it was um i was terrified to move to smackdown i I knew that Vince considered it the B show because it wasn't live. And, um, yeah, so it was really hard for me to move. I know, I know why they wanted me to move at the time. They were moving SmackDown to a different time slot on a different network. And so they were trying to build up all this buzz. But for me, it just felt like the end of my career. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's big careers. Um, so I suppose when you did get released uh, later on, uh, was it Johnny Ace who uh, sent them uh, papers over or that phone call? <laughs> <laughs> sent the papers and the trash bag. Um, so, uh, so my release is a little strange. That one, that one is a little strange because um, it isn't so much that they released me as it was I wouldn't sign the new contract that they sent me. Um, yeah. So it was a little bit of both. Um, I was still negotiating with them about what my deal was going to be and they weren't willing to come to terms with it. Um, you know, I had worked for the company for about five and a half years. I found that I was making, I don't know, about one tenth what the guys were making at uh, big shows like WrestleMania and I was pretty fed up. 
um, at that time. And so I told him, no, I'm not going to sign that. Um, because it was actually less than I was making. Um, oh. Like the downside part of it, I was making more than my downside. And um, it was less than what I was making. So I was like, well, why am I going to sign that? That's ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I mean, so it was a little bit of both. They released me because I wasn't willing to sign the new deal. Um, and yeah, it was John, John Laurinaitis. Um, and yeah, I, I, I was given a call. It was the day after my birthday. And, um, then I received, uh, my stuff. Like, I think it was a, within a week or so after so long ago now. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's came up lately. Uh, obviously Mickey James has posted it, uh, and it looks like Mark Rana is the one who's took the bullet. So the trash bag situation. So. On your, I mean, we'll go into your second run in a bit, but your second run, what was your dealings with uh, Mark Carano during that time? Because obviously he took over as head of talent relations, which is quite a uh, cut off. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, so Mark Carano, so it seems like he's took the bullet now for this, I suppose, <laughs> track bag gate, you could say. I'm, I'm interested to see when he was actually fired, though. I'm pretty sure he was fired the day before um, the tweet came out, but I don't know because, you know, I, I don't work there, so I have no idea for sure. But I have heard he was actually fired the day before uh, Mickey's tweet came out. So um, it, it was more convenient for them to just put it on him than it was to actually talk about the systemic problem in that company. Um, so uh, Mark has been fine with me. Um, except for the fact, I think he hid that I told him I was planning on having another baby. Right. I don't think he told Vince McMahon or anybody in talent relations at the time that we had had a conversation about how I wanted to have another baby within the next couple of years. Of course, like God only knows when you're going to get pregnant. Like, I don't know if you have any kids, but it's not like, it's not Pretty like... <laughs> exactly. Like, yep. so my first was a surprise. My second, we were trying, but we didn't know like how long that was going to take. Um, and so we told Mark like, Hey, we'd like to have our kids close together. Um, because we'd like them to grow up with each other. Mike and I have crazy jobs and we want them to have each other when we go on the road. And so I don't know if Mark actually talked to anybody about this or if, they gave me a deal without knowing like all the facts. Um, and like when we signed, I didn't know I was pregnant. Um, but Mark definitely knew we were trying. So like, it's just this very, um, so if I take anything away from Mark's firing, I'm just curious if he was hiding information like that with other people as well. Um, and saying, oh, yeah, I'll I'll tell whoever. And then it just never got across. Um, because to me, I was willing to take a step back from wrestling. Um, so I was actually surprised when they offered me the deal that they did uh, with the knowledge that we were planning on having another baby. So either way, um, you know, I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, I was getting paid during that time, but I'm just curious if WWE even knew that, <laughs> or if Mark just kept the information to himself. Yeah, and uh, it's a bit of a coincidence that the former VP of Talent Relations, John Laurinaitis, has just returned just before Carano's just been fired. It's a bit of a freaky coincidence. <laughs> well, the funny part about that too is I received my first garbage bag underneath Mark Car or underneath John Laurinaitis. So like. This has been going on for a bit. Um, this situation is going on for a bit. And um, they really should hire outside HR department to come in and do some audits on what's going on within the company. And um, because they're a multi-billion dollar, they're a billion dollar industry, they really need to make sure they've got these things under control. Um, and with that amount of money and that amount of profits, record profits last year, they should be able to hire outside HR, um, hire therapists if, if people need mental help or, you know, I just, um, 
I think they need to really take a look within and start dealing with some of these um, real life adult problems. Yeah, and uh, I mean, um, I was going to talk about TNA, but we'll gloss over that. Um, but so your second run with WWE, I suppose we'll go into it before we speak about Ring of Honor and your return. Um, so, like you said, uh, you didn't realize she was pregnant when you signed, and I mean, congratulations uh, to lovely yeah. kids. Um, but do you reckon that probably affected uh, Mike's booking, like because the two years came, I suppose, as a package uh, compared to, say, for example. Becky and Seth, where they've had a couple of months together, but they're known for like separate careers, really. So, do you reckon that affected Mike's booking? Who knows with that company, really? I mean, I I know they didn't. I, I know that Vince really wasn't a huge fan of Mike's, mm-hmm. um, and so maybe that came into play when they found out I was pregnant um, the second time. I I don't know. I. I think um, I think WWE has so much talent under their umbrella that they don't know what to do with it a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, they have so many resources at their disposal that they refuse to use. Um, they keep their costs low by not having a whole lot of office personnel. And um, in a lot of ways, that does them a disservice because they, they don't have... Um, they should have a huge me, uh, uh, social media department. They should have a huge uh, department that takes care of um, all the exclusive conf- uh, uh, content on the WWE network. But I, I just, I don't think they have a lot of that. So when you have such a big roster, but not a lot of office people to handle the roster, it just makes it very hard. And so people get, um, they get left behind like my husband and myself because once they found out I was pregnant, um, you know, then it makes their booking different. But I think they knew when they called me about the storyline with Becky and Seth, I think they knew, um, I had taken a, um, they did a urine test a couple weeks before, um, that storyline with Seth and Becky, um, and I didn't know I was pregnant at the time. I had only found out um, probably maybe five or six days before um, I got the call about the Becky and Seth storyline that I was pregnant. So the P test was two weeks prior to that. So I'm sure that they saw it in that. And they should have called me. They should have called me to tell me that, hey, um, we think you might be pregnant, maybe go get a professional, you know, just a, a test to look exclusively at that. Um, but instead, I got a call about creative. And um, I don't know if they were playing games or if they really didn't know and the doctors hadn't gotten around to calling me. Um, so a lot of it, you know, I wonder. Um, I got a lot of questions. Yeah, I can imagine. And uh so they done the storyline. I mean, eventually uh, you became 24-7 champion and uh, your uh, newborn, I suppose, he's the youngest ever champion in the it's WWE first, history. <laughs> first feed is champ. Um, exactly. it's, you know what? I, I will never be upset about that storyline because I just think about how many women um, that are pregnant that think that they can't you know, accomplish their dreams or if they can't do anything because they're pregnant or having kids or whatever. And for me, the title was a huge, like, um, ego boost that I needed while I was getting bigger and bigger while pregnant. Um, (laughs) and I will forever be signing that title because of that. And I hope that other people will also feel like champions while they're pregnant because it is one of the most difficult jobs in the world. Oh, yeah, my wife. Um, so we've got three boys. So our two youngest is four. <laughs> and three. There's ten and a half months between them. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So when everyone says to me, oh, our youngest is like 18 months. I thought, I thought oh, yeah, that's cute. <laughs> ten and a half months. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they're 22 I, months apart. Um, and that was, that was by design. We had hoped that they would be within two years of each other, but, um, it happened quick. We were like, Hey, so should we, you know, maybe try for a second? It was like, 
bang, and that was it. It was just, it was crazy. <laughs> awesome, cool. So, yacht release, obviously, they blame, uh, they said because of COVID budgets, but we know that's not true because they are making record profits at the minute, but that's that. But so I suppose the silver lining out this, you made your return to Ring of Honor, and yeah, I was so happy when I saw that you and Mike was coming back, and now Mike's with uh, Taven again as the kingdom, and uh, they're squaring off against um, the Righteous, which I actually spoke to Vita von Star the other day, and she says, even though you've said you're not getting back in the ring, she still wants to get you in the ring. <laughs> so uh, I'm looking forward to that, but how does it feel like be- returning home, basically, to Ring of Honor? It's amazing. I, uh, God is good. And I think that um, if anything in the last year, uh, if it's taught me anything, it's that, that you just don't know. You don't know what's going to happen right around the bend. And um, we were terrified, um, mm. not only because COVID was, it is incredibly scary. We lost my grandfather, like within a few weeks of quarantine, not from COVID for other reasons. Yeah. Um, so, like we lost my grandfather. We were released from WWE. My son was two months old. It was insane. We thought what was going to end up happening was that, um, Mike was going to go out on the road and just not come home. Um, yeah because we we had to make money and so we were basically going to make him the sacrificial lamb that if he got covid you know at least we could still pay our bills um it it was just weird it was a a really hard thing so as soon as i mean ring of honor reached out right away and you know was like uh congratulations on your son um and all that kind of stuff so like Ring of Honor started getting back in touch with Mike about August. And then, um, so he was the first one that they ended up bringing back. I was still a little bit hesitant, but by August, we were already talking about me working with the women. Um, And then by November, we had pretty much decided on it. So um, it's, it's incredible. Ring of Honor and, and I, we knew exactly both where we wanted my career to go. So it was like, it, it was kismet in that sense of like, okay, I want to work with the women's division. They were like, we want you to work with the women's division. It was like, okay, cool. Like, um, it was great. Awesome. And uh, speaking of uh, the bombshell, so you dropped the bombshell on the 19th show, um, the uh, women's tournament. So, so it's, it looks like it's going to be pretty big. Uh, there's some exciting names. Uh, what's already been announced, like Angelina is going to be part, I suppose, and Mandy. Uh, but yeah, so. What's your big prediction for this tournament? And any uh, names you can uh, give a, a hint to who might be a parent? I will give you no names. There will be oh. no names given. <laughs> Go on, Rob. Um, From what I have seen so far and what you will see on Women's Division Wednesday, we have a really good pool of talent. Um, they are hardworking women. They are from uh, different backgrounds, incredibly diverse. Um, we are going to give the same amount of care to the women's division tournament as we did the pure tournament, same amount of time, same amount of, uh, spotlight. So, uh, these women will really be able to show what they can do in that ring. And that's the most important thing. Ring of honor is all about athleticism and sport. That's, that is number one. And that is what you're going to see. Um, this past week on women's division Wednesday was four brand new faces to ring of honor and, I think that is going to be par for the course, that you are going to see a lot of um, new faces alongside um, the faces that you've already seen on TV. So um, gonna have to watch every week. I'm gonna have big announcements. My favorite part of my job, which is ticket to golds, which I get to give away on surprise Zoom calls. Sometimes the girls aren't prepared. They're not ready to go. They're like, oh, I thought this was just talking about my match that I had or, and I'm like, yes, I got you. You know, we've got animals in them. We've got people that are, like, out doing things. And then others are, like, super prepared with, like, really nice backgrounds. Um, it's, it's awesome. It is uh, the, my favorite part of my job because it's an opportunity for um, deserving, talented women. Awesome. So we've took well, enough of your time, but have you got five more minutes for some fun questions? Sure. Let's do it. Awesome. Cool. So, friend of the show, at Dan Griffin, said, how much fun was it filming the Thanksgiving food fight in TNA in 2016? Because he was actually part of the audience. 
Well, thank you for being a part of the audience. Um, it was amazing. Uh, gosh, that was one of the most talented groups of uh, wrestlers I've ever worked with. It really was. I mean, the roster was stacked. A yeah. lot of us were former WWE talent, but then you also had all these guys that made names for themselves in other places that all kind of converged on impact. Plus you had, um, you had David Lagana and you had Billy Corgan who were heading up the creative and um, Dixie letting us all have freedom in what we were doing creatively. So it was, it was amazing. Um, the food fight was hilarious. Uh, Allie is one of the best performers I've ever been in the ring with. She is, she can do anything. That woman can do anything. She can wrestle. She can be strong. She can be empowered. She can be the assistant. Um, it, she, she's amazing. Awesome. Uh, question from UTT Rob. Uh, did you ever suggest using uh, the TNA presentation of uh, yourself and Mike when you got to WWE, the uh, miracle gimmick? We tried. Um, we tried a lot of things. We sat on the shelf with WWE for four months. Um, oh. before actually brought us to TV. So we signed, I think it was in April. It might have been at the end of March. We weren't brought to TV until four months later. So um, we lost a lot of steam during that time. Um, they pretended like they really wanted to use us and were um, excited about uh, the team that we were. And then um, very quickly, uh, week two, I remember turning to Mike when we got in the car and I was like, we're done. We're done. Our where we are buried. And I don't know why that is. Um, it doesn't matter though. Like where we are now, like compared to then is insane. So like that doesn't matter. Um, and, and I'm, I'm glad for it. I don't believe in regret. No. And uh, this guy sent, he must be a big fan. He sent about 10 questions, but I'll read a couple. Uh, so demo, uh, uh, demo God one, did the Bella twins steal your idea for Total Divas? Uh, steal my idea? I don't know. Um, I don't know what those conversations were. Um, I know that the show that I was working on was sold, um, was ready to go. And then once Total Divas was picked up, uh, the show that we were working on, uh, which was called Smash Girls, it was all independent wrestlers. Um, it disappeared and our deal disappeared. So I don't know what happened there. Um, again, that's another thing that's way in the past. And I'll never know the facts behind it. Um, no ill will whatsoever when it comes to that. Um, just don't know what happened. Right. And he also asked, uh, what's your favorite uh, John Cena story? Favorite John Cena story. Um, I can't tell my favorite one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I you're think... Gonna you're going to have to now because you've diesel too much. Ah... <laughs> uh... Gosh, I'm trying to think. Uh, another John Cena story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, he's just, he's amazing. But I'll, I'll tell you my favorite one. Um, so I was, I always would go out with everybody. But I didn't really like drinking that much um, when we were going to have early mornings. I actually hated it. So um, if I knew I was going to be able to sleep in, yay, let's have a good time. But if I knew I had to be up early, no thank you. So I would go out. I would hold a drink. Um, I just wouldn't drink it. So one time, John's like, and all night, I had been pouring my drinks out into a plant. And apparently, <laughs> John had seen me uh, pouring my drink out in the plant. So he's like, I see what you're doing. He's like, but I respect that. He's like, thanks for coming out, kid. And that was it. And he never brought it up again. And he never, he always knew I wasn't drinking with everybody else. But he just, he just was fine with it. As long as I was, as I was hanging out with everybody and he never called me out for it. So yeah, he, I, I always, um, I always had a great relationship with him um, in the sense that I always felt like I could ask him questions about the industry. And um, he would always be the first one down having breakfast in the morning so he could go to the gym. And I would always end up um, going down very early, too. And so we would just chat about family and, um, you know, how he was doing and how, you know, 
what he had coming up next. So, um, yeah, John's a great guy. Awesome. And final question for myself. What was it like working with Donald Trump on The Apprentice? <laughs> I don't know. You're pulling it off you. It had to be asked. <laughs> had to be what? Had to be asked. <laughs> um. Okay. So Donald Trump was a great performer. Uh, and um, he got a lot of people to view his, uh, his show. And in turn, we were able to make millions of dollars for charity. Um, and that's, that's pretty much all I can say about that. Um, yeah, I'm glad I did it because we made a lot of money for charity. But other than that, um, my interactions with him, uh, yeah, no, no, thank you. You said he was a great performer. So I could imagine, even though he's quite cheery on the TV behind the scenes, not as much. <laughs> no, um, when I'll never forget the first time. Um, I walked into the boardroom and he said to me, I brought you in to this show. I can take you out. And I was like, okay, that's how it's going to be. Cool. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Cool. Well, Marie, it's an absolute pleasure. I've took more than enough time off you. But uh, yeah, for everyone who's uh, watching this, if you're not watching Ring of One, I don't know why. But if you want to watch it over in the UK, you can watch it on the Fight TV app every week. So, Maria, thanks very much. Watch the Honor Club. You can also watch us on YouTube. Um, amazing stuff coming up on the Women's Division Wednesday, amazing stuff coming up on Ring of Honor Television. So, uh, thank you, everybody. Cool. And uh, before we do sign off, uh, tell them where they can find you on social media. You can find me on Maria L. Canellis, and that's on Twitter. You can find me on uh, Maria Canellis on Instagram. I also have a Facebook page I pay absolutely no, no attention to whatsoever, and that's Official Maria Canellis. <laughs> I have a website that's officialmariacanellis.com. I have a patron, which I post all kinds of like uh, exclusive photos and stuff on. Um, yeah, that's probably the best places to catch me. But um, right now, my main focus is this women's division. So please, uh, Watch all of our girls on Women's Division Wednesday. Awesome. Thanks. And yeah, thank you so much for your time. And yeah, had a million questions, but yeah, hopefully we'll do a part two one day. Oh, sure. Why don't we uh, do it again right around um, the when the tournament starts? Yeah, even better. Probably, yeah. Uh, August. Oh, August would be good. So awesome. we should do something in August. And then, um, yeah, we can talk about all the girls in the tournament then uh, rather than me just saying, I can't tell you. Um, <laughs> Because I, I don't know everybody yet. I, I haven't decided on three spots right now. So, um, yeah, we're still looking. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, everyone. James here. I hope you enjoyed the interview. I had a great time chatting to Maria. And before I announce next week's interview, uh, you've probably noticed that I've got new logos and new intro. And uh, I want to say a big thank you to Wrestling Bios for the audio. We've me so yeah great stuff loving the new theme song and i also want to say a good uh, thank you to my pal nick from universal wrestling podcast for the artworks really delivered so thank you lads and yeah really loving it and that's for an announcement for next week's interview so uh big one next week so we've got the uh, former uh, big kaz or kaz xl uh, now known as w morrissey in impact wrestling uh great chat to him uh talked about his time in WWE, why things didn't work out on his release, uh, what he said to Enzo Amore when the Hardy Boys returned at WrestleMania, something that's been uh, bugging me for a long time, talk about his current run in Impact Wrestling now and his plans there, and yeah, great chat to him, and yeah, talks about the issues he's had in the past and now that he's overcome them, so yeah, really good chat to him, so yeah, hopefully you'll be checking him for that one. And yeah, everyone, if you want to follow me on social media, you can do. I'm on Twitter, at 90s Wrestling Pod. Also on Instagram, that 90s Wrestling Podcast. And yeah, if you want to hit me up with a five-star rating on or a like on YouTube or on podcast platforms. And yeah, if you could give me a subscribe and a comment, even better. And just tell your friends about the channel, where it really does help me out. And yeah, we've got some big announcements for this month. So yeah, some uh, it's going to be pretty damn good. So everyone, thanks again for checking out, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!